We know that WikiLeaks exposed war crimes and the war criminals. We know that is why he is in jail. We know that over years and years he has been subjected to conditions which amount to psychological torture. In November 2019, Nils Meltzer and John Pilger and others visited him in Belmarsh, where we're going to later on today, and they expressed fears for his life. We know, living in Britain, that conditions in British prisons are dire. British prisons and British healthcare face chronic understaffing and lack of funds. And we know that the effects of the prison regime exact an increasing toll on Assange's health. We know that this, together with the threat of extradition to the United States and still worse conditions, are intended to serve as a warning to journalists across the world. We know that Assange's legal case has been fraught with unreasonable delay and the flouting of legal procedures. We know that the very validity of the extradition is put in question by the case going through the Spanish courts, that conversations between Assange and his lawyers were illicitly recorded by Spanish security company Usley Global and passed on to US intelligence. This violation of the principle of lawyer-client confidentiality could or should annul the extradition request. Where are we now? What do we know? On January the 4th, 2021, the magistrate, Vanessa Bereza, ruled that Assange should not be extradited on the grounds that the combination of his mental health and the conditions he would endure in an American supermax prison raised a real likelihood that faced with extradition to the US, he would take his own life. In December, a whole year later, 2021, Assange is still in prison, this was overturned by the High Court after the US appealed, giving belated assurances concerning his treatment in the US. The defence team appealed to the Supreme Court against this decision, and it was rejected last June, June 2022. On the 17th of June 2022, then Home Secretary Priti Patel approved his extradition. In August 2022, the defence team lodged a cross appeal from Vanessa Barates' decision, which had accepted all the other US DOJ grounds for extradition. Since August 2022, when they lodged that cross appeal, nothing has progressed, nothing. He remains in Belmarsh. We also know that in September 2021, Yahoo News reported on CIA plots to kill or kidnap Assange from this very embassy, from the Ecuadorian embassy. And the discussions about this went to the highest levels of the Trump administration. Does this mean that the British authorities are content to place Assange in the hands of people who we know would like him dead? We know all this. Assange's journey over the past 13 years has been epic. It has been epic on the scale of the Greek heroes and faced with all the challenges and hurdles that they faced. But his story is no myth. His story is a grim reality. And the significance of our fight was never more urgent. I have always seen the campaign to free Assange as a significant and major part of the call for peace and a major and significant part of the peace movement. It's a call against war. It's a call against the hegemony of the United States who want unrestricted rule so that nobody knows the secrets that go on, nobody knows the lies. Their unrestricted rule depends on keeping things secret. And there has never been a more dangerous period in post-war history. Those who know the truth those who know the truth of WikiLeaks, of Assange, of all the difficulties that he's faced, I believe that we cannot live with our consciences knowing the truth unless we take action to defend him. And that action is to defend justice, to defend him, and to ensure that the people's voice against war and the looming threat of fascism 
can be heard. Yay. Yay.